Hi, this is Swati Sela from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and in this segment we're going to learn about usability testing. Now usability testing for the most part is a non-functional form of testing. Um, now again, uh, it is important to focus on the for the most part part of the sentence because uh, there is no form of testing that can be generalized saying that whether it is functional or non-functional. And the same thing applies for usability also. And we're going to talk about, you know, which areas of usability testing might be functional, which are not, so on and so forth. Uh, but mostly in today's segment, we are going to talk about these aspects. What is usability testing? How is it performed? Who perf performs it? When is it performed? And where? So these are the, uh, you know, few question uh, things that we're going to answer about usability testing. So let's start with understanding what exactly it is. Usability testing, uh, when usability testing is performed, the primary focus is on how easy is the application to use. Now this usability testing can be performed on web applications, Windows applications, or on mobile applications. So whatever the kind of application might be, uh, these are mostly customer facing applications. So these are basically businesses and how easy is it for us to use it? And if not for the first time, how easy is it to learn so that you keep coming back and using the system? And finally, after you're done using it, how satisfactory was your experience? So these are the three things that are mostly focused on in usability testing. Now let's take a real world example. Say if you were to go to a store. Now first thing is, does the store carry what you're looking for, correct? Now if the store carries what you're looking for, but it is extremely difficult to find it, would you use the store again? No, right? So here are the questions that we are trying to understand. Does it carry what you need? So this is the first consideration. The next is, is it easy to find the item or whatever you're looking for? Now the third consideration is, even if it is not easy, but once you found it, does it make sense? So that sort of a question. Say for example, you're looking for um, milk. So that might not be in the very front aisle of your grocery store, but you be kind of like, you know, over a period of time, we learn that that's something you found at the, uh, you know, the last part or the later behind part of your grocery store. So even if it is, you know, not, if you, even if it's something that you're looking for, you might not find it right away, but somehow we learn that it's going to be found in certain place. So this kind of concept, it's easy to learn. And from the next time, we kind of adapt to it. So um, does the store carry what you need? Is it easy to find the item? And even if it's not easy, but once you find found it, does it make sense? And will you be able to returning? Uh, will you be able to return to that sort of a framework? And finally, uh, does the item is it satisfactory or not? So if, if at all the product was very easy to find, but the product is does not work, it's of inferior quality, you wouldn't like it, correct? So in, in addition to ease of use, you need to be able to learn it easily and it should be satisfactory. So satisfaction comes from both, uh, predominantly from efficiency. So if the uh, application uh, promises you something, let's take for example, a banking application where you're trying to perform a transfer. Okay, so even though the transfer button is right there available to you in front of you, when you click on it, so when it is available in front of you, the very first assumption is that it's easy to find, it's easy to locate, but then if it is not performing this transfer correctly, again, we would, uh, you know, say that the experience was unsatisfactory and the, and the chances that we will return to the application are going to be slim. And in these days, businesses cannot afford to not have their users return back to them on a recurring basis. So all of these considerations are very important in a usability testing. So what it basically tries to determine is how easy is it to use, how easy is it to learn, and how satisfactory is the entire experience. Now as you can see, 
And all of these aspects are intangible or non-measurable. They do not have any specifics. So usability testing is a lot trickier than the regular functional testing. So let's go into our slide um, and see the other aspects of it. The next thing is how usability testing is performed. So usability testing, the main consideration is on how the application is designed. So the focus is mostly on design and of course on functionality because an inefficient application, even though it's best designed and if it's very easy to use, it's not going to make a lot of sense to the users, right? So when it comes to how, one of the early stages that usability testing can be performed is during the design phase. So we are also answering the when question. So one of the very first form of um, usability testing can be in the design phase of the software development life cycle. So during the design phase, all you could do is like take a, take a pen and paper, just draw up the design and see if it makes a logical sense. So this is the first method and very easy method. And in case uh, method one is followed and all the applications follow this actually, when the design is being drawn up, uh, all the stakeholders sit together and they make a decision of whether this design is going to work or not. So at this point, usability testing, if in the design phase, is performed by the um, everybody in the project team. So the business analysts, the development team, um, the design team, all of these people play a prominent role uh, in determining the usability of uh, the application during the design phase. Um, another form of usability testing is an exploratory method. That means you run random tests on the application and then determine how easy is it for you to use. So this is what we are all as functional testers do inevitably and you know probably not very consciously. Uh, so what I'm trying to tell you is every application that you get, we're all going to do a little bit of exploration on it. During the exploration, if something doesn't make sense, we just point it out. Even though we don't, uh, you know, specifically, you know, um, consciously sit down to usability test an application. So when we say exploratory testing is going to be carried out in method two, it means that the um, product is in the, um, you know, system test phase because that's when you will have the most live-like experience and um, in the system test phase, if it is going to be tested, then at this point of time, it's mostly going to be testers or even UAP users who might point out that, you know, there are obvious design issues. Now, method three is uh, you could hire a set of real-time users to work on their site and they could report the results. In most applications that are, you know, very much uh, user-facing, applications are released ahead of time. Uh, in a beta testing mode and um, the real-time users are asked to perform certain tasks on the application and their results are uh, gathered. Now let's take a look at this. When we hire a set of real-time users, how is the testing going to be performed? Number one, tasks are going to be given to these users. So for example, if it's a banking site, you, users are going to be asked, uh, like perform a transfer and, you know, perform like a, um, a checking of your mini statement or try to print a statement. So this sort of little tasks are given to the user and the results are in the form of statistics. So these statistics might include information like was the operation, was it a success or a failure. This is one thing that we might uh, try to understand and then how much time it took to finish this task and how easy was it. So here you could have like a rating system of 0 to 5 or, you know, ABC, whatever rating system works for you and get their experiences. Now, once all of these results come up, they are going to be presented to the design phase and everybody sits down and make a decision. So in this case, when you hire a set of real-time users, the testers are basically real-time users and the real-time users will only provide statistics. They are not going to determine if something is a defect or not. They are only going to, you know, give their suggestions. And 
all this data, all this data of whether the operation was a success, how much time it took, how easy was it, all of this data goes back to the project team for analysis and further action. So the defect uh, reporting strategy and the methodology is slightly different. So unlike in the regular testing where we just find the defect, report it to the developer, they fix it and we retest it. Here we are going to provide a set of information to the project team. They can decide on whether they want to act on it or whether they want to go ahead with it. Or you know, uh, testers can also provide some suggestions, but we are not in a position to determine whether that defect has to be fixed or you know, do we have to retest it? All that is out of scope for testers. Method four is there are a lot of automation tools where you can upload the wireframes of your application and it will let you know whether it is a usable uh, you know design that you've created or not. Method five is there are lots of you know third party usability teams who specialize in usability testing and they can come in for you, do an analysis and report back the results. And method six is you can submit the site designs to an external evaluator and get the results. So method four and five are pretty much similar, but method four, you are not going to do it to a physical evaluator. You're just going to upload it to different websites that will provide this sort of service for you. So these are the five ways in which usability testing goes on. Um, let's see what else are we missing here. Um, okay, there are lots of tools that uh, go into usability testing, but I'll come to that in a little bit. So we have, we've defined what usability testing is. Uh, how is it performed? There are five methods each uh, and each company will decide on which method to use depending on their need and who performs this. The tests are usually performed by real-time users or, you know, software testers or the functional testing team, QA team, uh, in other words, or it could be performed by external evaluation teams. And who analyzes the defects? It is the project team and they are going to make a decision. And when um, it could either be in the design phase or in the system testing phase or in the beta testing phase where the product is available to the users ahead of its go live date. And where is it performed? This could either be in the, um, again, when it's in the de design phase, it means the product is not available. So pretty much, you know, um, there is really no point of discussing in what environment. But usability testing can be done either in the development environment, QA environment, and production environment, depending on uh, at what time are we evaluating the product. So. Uh, that being said, there are lots of tools used in the uh, usability testing as well. So when we say how, we'll have to obviously mention the tools as well. So I've decided, divided the tools into five major categories. Category one is the monitoring tools. So in the monitoring tools, what can be done is if I am the designer, I would just, you know, design some tasks, give it to the real time users and watch while they are performing the task. So if it, if the user and the designer happen to be in the same room, both of them can sit by side by side and you know make it work. But if uh, they are geographically dislocated, a tool uh, like GoToTraining or you know Skype, all of these can be used. And uh, category number two is task based, where you where you give certain tasks to the users and you know get their statistics. And all the tools are listed here. And the third category of tools is heat map or user movement recorders. So these are very unique. So these are automation tools that can actually, you know, um, give you statistics about what area of your page that the user has spent a lot of time on. So that way you can understand where they might be having the trouble and where they are, you know, uh, easily able to adapt. And um, category four is feedback or survey. So you can just give your application and, you know, ask some questions about it and receive the results. Category five is uh, there are some sites that recruit real-time users and, you know, have your application tested. So all of these tools are available in the market. So let me show you a real-time example of how you would perform a usability testing. Now I have this, you know, site that is a car dealership, uh, you know, website. Now in this site, if I were to buy a car, I would just, you know, um, select a make and model and you know perform a search and now that the search results have, retrieved, have been retrieved I'll choose one 
And uh, once I choose this car, it, it is giving me some basic information. And now what I want to do is, I want to get the pictures. I want to understand if this car is still available and, you know, uh, further information about it. In that case, I'll have to send a message to a dealer, which is predominantly an email. Now, with email, I might send an email today and not receive a response for the next few days or weeks, right? And even if it is, you know, um, a few hours, it is still some time that I have to wait. And let's face it, we all don't have, you know, that much of patience, attention span. We might find another car in a little, you know, um, in little to no time. So it's really bad for the business for this particular dealer. So it is better to have or replace this email system with a probably a live chat option. So that will make it easier and not let the interest of the um, customer get diluted in this particular uh, product. So that's just one example. So you see functionally sending this email and everything that might completely work 100% without any question. But is that in the business's best interest? Is that something, you know, um, really very usable for the user? Is that a satisfying experience for the user? Probably not. So you see, it's not uh, it's a completely functional in nature, uh, nor is it completely non-functional. So that kind of categorization cannot be too rigid when it comes to usability testing. So um, it's a very interesting branch of testing and uh, very, very intuitive. So if that's the thing, then definitely give usability testing a try. Thank you.